Nyahar! Oh, just when you thought the seas were getting quiet out there, that Chris Greer didn't have any cards up his sleeves. He goes to the crow's nest and he shouts out, Yo ho ho, Del Beckham Jr. <coughs> oh, what's that? You want to meet and make a deal, Odell Beckham Jr. OBJ to MIA. Nyar. See, this is why you never want to jump to conclusions when it comes to Chris Greer, right? Because the dude loves to go big game hunting, all right? The man can't help himself. He's had his harpoon out for for, for for years straight. And even though the money was looking tight, even though people were looking at this and saying, yeah, I don't know, you lost Christian Wilkins. And hey, listen, I'm not happy about it. Don't get me wrong. But all of a sudden, the pieces are starting to fall into place. You're seeing everybody sign up. You got Drew Rosenhaus today on Joe Rose talking to the big dog about, oh, my guys are taking less money to come to the Miami Dolphins. You know, and listen, he loses somebody, keeps some there. You know, people want to come down here. It's a destination, folks. Okay. It's a destination. If you're going to be on the cheap ski somewhere, what better place to be than down here? No state tax, beautiful weather. People are here anyway. They're working out. You can make some things happen. Things can be advantageous to the Miami Dolphins. And yet, here we stand today. The Miami Dolphins met with Odell Beckham Jr. And apparently, and according to the man himself, uh, the, one of the best reporters in town, Barry Jackson, sports buzzing. Meeting reportedly went well. <laughs> Which, I mean, <laughs> listen. I know that he may not be what he once was, but let's not let's not act like this would not just be a significant upgrade to what Miami would have in that third spot right now. Which, listen, respect to Braxton Barrios, respect to you know bringing in the bringing back the great River Craycraft. Nobody's happier than that than me because nobody on this on this planet bet River Craycraft anytime touchdown more than me, and I am happy that Conejo Blanco is is back in the fold. It is great to have him. But I I am I am not going to sit here and act like my uh, fancy is not tickled by the idea of bringing Odell Beckham Jr. This is the thing. Look, this is a man now. He's matured, all right? I was listening today. I was uh I was driving around. I just got back from vacation and um but still off for the uh, for the rest of the week on the radio show, right? And I was you know, perusing, I flip on my uh, my buddy Leroy Horde, and you know, of course, you know, Frog Boy loves it. You know, he's 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 getting his his bearings as a as a radio personality. You know, you you gotta you gotta sometimes dream big. And this man, you know, he has opened up, he has freed his mind. Whereas Leroy Horde, of course, was poo pooing it. And what I what I was trying to explain to everybody in just a few brief texts to my team, right? Is that, you know, first of all, classic Leroy, loving that he's going to poo-poo the fun. And, and and I would say, you know, there's a reason we call him Cleroy, because this man is Cleveland Browns loyal. He loves the Cleveland Browns. And, you know, I, I don't know why. I mean, they left the city. Who, who knows why? But, you know, th that's fine. He can love who he loves. You know, hanging out with Jay Crawford, who he looks upon as more prof of, a, of a professional than I am. But that's fine. You know, things didn't go smoothly in Cleveland for Odell Beckham. You know, I had the torn ACL, then I hold the whole drama with Baker Mayfield and his dad and the whole, you know, edits and whatnot. But this is a matured man. You know, he went on to leave Cleveland, was an absolute monster in the NFC Championship game for the Los Angeles Rams. When everybody thought, oh, Diva bringing him in, what can he do? And he went on and, and helped that team go and win a Super Bowl. So... I'm not going to sit here and, and, and be deterred by the idea that this is the Odell Beckham uh, drama of years past. If anything, this is clearly going to be second place to whatever we have to go on with the Cheetah's drama. But of course, you know, the Cheetah's drama, I mean, listen, he's the greatest receiver on the planet. And the Dolphins are, uh, are doing a tit for tat there with uh, having a Tyreek Hill story every week that they have to deal with. But on the other end of it, he's breaking the franchise record every single year. But I do think a Tyreek Hill discussion is interesting on this from a football perspective because it did feel very much you know Tyreek Hill today on Instagram puts up there and he goes you know 2k 
You know, he's starting to get ready for the season. And you're like, all right, that's, that's great. We're, 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 we're shooting for 2K. Who doesn't want to see a man break a record? But I think we can all agree last year that more so last year than even the year before, this offense needs to wean off of Tyreek Hill being as Tyreek Hill reliant. You know, they got to diversify the diet a little bit. Who doesn't love, you know, having empanadas every single morning, but, you know, you have too many of them. You're not going to be able to function. You, every once in a while, you got to throw in something different. And with Tyreek Hill, look, if he goes out there, he to, who's I'm not going to be complaining. Great. He, he did what he set out to do. But the more important thing here, and I think we all saw this with Tyreek by the end of things, that dude was not the same receiver the last month of the season that he was early on. And you look at his stature, you look at his size, and you think to yourself, all right, maybe the idea is we don't go so heavy on getting Tyreek Hill the football all the time. And we knew we got an insight from that with Hard Knocks about how much Mike McDaniel Loved giving the football to Tyreek Hill. The kid looked like a lost puppy every time Tyreek Hill would go out of the games for one of his uh, supercharged IVs, right? I, I just think that there is a benefit to the Dolphins skewing not all the way to Tyreek Hill. You have the most unstoppable weapon of the game, but if everybody knows it all the time, if that's all you got... If he does go out for a series, yeah, every once in a while, Waddle's going to do his thing. And I think Waddle himself can be poised for a monster year, knowing what his riches are coming up. But I think with both of these guys being about the same size and stature, Waddle being a little bit a little bit leaner, but still, adding an Odell Beckham Jr. I think is interesting from just a different abilities standpoint. And I, and I would be curious to see you know, what that would mean for this uh, for this franchise. Crazy that we know that the uh, the money is the big thing with Odell Beckham. He hasn't done many deals on the cheap skis. He's made a ton of dough last year. And there is, I think, an interesting thing here is that Odell can be picky. He obviously seems to have an initial interest in Miami, as do they. And then the Miami Dolphins, of course, in June and more money comes in. They got some deals that they can still work together to get some more space. There's still some avenues to give maybe the money that he is so desiring. I'm not sitting here offering him like $15 million. I think that's crazy talk for one year. But, um, you know, I, I think that the Dolphins wouldn't do it if they knew that it wasn't a possibility with Odell. They wouldn't waste their time uh, reaching out and 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 – Meetings I don't think would have gone well if there wasn't somewhere in the ballpark of, uh, you know, the money being there. So do I find it interesting? Of course I find it interesting. Now, fun fact, Odell Beckham Jr. does have me blocked on Twitter. I don't remember exactly what I was responding to because I've only tweeted to Odell Beckham once. And I tweeted him the, uh, the gif of Seinfeld, the jerk store called and they're running out of you. I want to say it was Miami Heat related because it's the only thing that would usually get me sensitive about that. And that that would be like because I wouldn't comment on his football playing. I don't think you know. I don't feel like he had a comment back in the day on the Dolphins that would have upset me. So I, I feel like it had something to do with basketball, but I don't remember what. I've tried searching it, and for whatever reason, it doesn't come up in my Twitter searches anymore. And um, you know, but he does have me blocked. He does have me. He's already got me blocked. So I guess uh, he's not going to see any tweets that I have about this. But I'm very interested in the Dolphins bringing Odell Beckham Jr. And I'm very interested in what they're, they're still looking at. I think the thing that is going to be interesting with this draft season, you know, the Miami Dolphins have done a lot of patchwork, good jobs, I think, with everybody being respectful of, you know, bringing in the pieces that they have. You know, you lose a Rob Hunt, you lose a Christian Wilkins. They still have to find some ground. There's a lot of directions they could go in this uh, in this whole draft scenario, but I don't know if you guys saw the the uh, the stuff from Texas where uh, you know there was a couple of things here. There was Xavier Worthy, who of course uh, you know smashed all type of records at the combine with his forty time new forty record, and uh, this was him uh, speaking to reporters in Texas about Mike McDaniel specifically. And what are these moments like when you're able to just talk to Mike and Daniel and chop it up with him and have a conversation? Man, it's crazy, man, just to be able to, like, like him, he's just, like, a, a coach known for just how goofy he is. So just, like, being able to talk to him, like, it's, like, he's, like, a legend. Like, a lot, a lot of people, like, 
wish to talk to them. So it's like it's crazy just to be able to have that platform and do that and just talk to them. He is like a legend, isn't he? Isn't that crazy though? Look, I think out of uh, we talk so much about Tua with this with this damn team, and and not. I agree that Tua has things that he has to improve upon, which I think that he will because he has shown a great ability to improve upon things. Um, But I think Mike McDaniel's almost got more to prove this year than Tua does. But the idea that he has made such an impact with his personality, the way that he handles things, the way everybody saw him in Hard Knocks. We saw this with John New Smith, right? John New Smith said Hard Knocks was a big reason. I think Mike McDaniel was a big attraction there. Sure, home was too. Uh, Rosenhaus having a, a relationship with the front office, big two, but Mike McDaniel, a big key. You have a kid here who stole the show at the combine calling your coach a legend. And let's be honest with you, Mike McDaniel looking at a guy who's running four twos, you know, his fancy is going to be tickled, but the word was that they were, uh, they were actually there for Jatavian Sanders, their, their star tight end. And, you know, there's been a lot of mock drafts that have had him anywhere like mid first to late first you've seen a lot of 32s of the chiefs but you have seen some dolphins too and the word was that they had met with him at length and that the miami dolphins you know were i guess there was a tony pauline report that said they were specifically there for him you know if you want to go with the guy who broke the 40 time record i think that mike mcdaniel you don't have to twist his arm for that but it is interesting that this is the first first round pick Mike McDaniel has as a head coach what direction do you think that he wants to go in we've all been very focused we think it's going to be trenches would be the most suitable thing but if there is a guy there who's got all the talent in the world and this is a coach who I think believes he can get a lot more out of the offensive line talent that maybe we you know don't believe in as much especially with a quarterback who gets rid of the football as fast as his quarterback does Man, maybe he does go another weapon. You know, maybe this is a, a guy who is looking that to to have so many options because they don't want to be all about the cheetah. You know, you you already know what he can do. You've seen what these what these weeks are like. And yeah, go to play, need it. I'm definitely going to number ten. However, I do think the Dolphins are trying to find themselves to have an ability to win in more varieties of ways and more variety of situations because we just saw things stall out so similarly in these games last year. And I think the coach is kind of going, I think he's going weapon shopping. You know, it does seem like he's got a, a lot of intrigue around trying to make this an offense that has more ways that it can't be stopped. So very interesting between the 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 draft perusing and the Odell Beckham Jr. meetings going on.